Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. People can make us angry, hurt us, betray us, tell lies about us. But now here, here's a big thing I'm going to tell you. Instead of getting mad at the people, now this is the big secret in the Word of God, so listen up. Somebody hurts your feelings. You hear somebody's gossiping about you and it just crushes you, you're really hurt because it was somebody you trusted and loved. Your first temptation is to get mad at the people, but then you realize it's just the enemy trying to upset you. And you know how important it is to keep your peace. So you say a little prayer, who knows, maybe you just go to the bathroom, you're out in public or something, you say, Lord, I thank you that you're on my side and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I rebuke the enemy in Jesus' name. I know that this is not really the person, it's the enemy trying to hold me back. Then, then, instead of getting mad at the person, you do what the Bible says in Romans 12, 21, and you overcome evil with good. So somebody tried to hurt you, your response is, I'm not only not going to get mad at you, I'm going to resist the devil, and I'm going to go a step further and go do something nice for somebody. Can anybody see the secret power in this? We overcome evil with good. I'm going to say it again. Somebody hurts you. You hear somebody's been talking about you. Uh, you are up for a promotion at work. Somebody stole it by telling a lie about you. You're just so wounded. Boy, you're tempted to get mad at them. You're tempted to go act the same way that they were acting. You want to gossip about them. You want to tell everybody what they've done to you. But instead, you say, Lord, I know that you're on my side, and when you're ready for me to be promoted, you will promote me, and no devil in hell can hold me back if I keep my trust in you. I resist you. I rebuke you. And then you go out, and you do something good for somebody. The best way in the world to get the devil back for anything he tries to do to you is to go out and respond by being good to somebody and to do it on purpose. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. I have found this secret, and it is absolutely, phenomenally amazing. Romans 12, 21 says, We overcome evil with good. I so wanted to get the devil back for what my dad did to me. For a long time, I wanted to get my dad back, and then I found out my war was with the enemy. And I got him back good and proper when through the leading of God, I took care of my father who had sexually abused me until he died. Put him in a good home, provided car service for him, made sure he had his groceries, paid for the nursing home he was in. That's the way you get the devil back. That's the way you get the enemy back. That's how you disable the enemy. Now listen, you know, many years ago, back in the 70s and 80s, there was what those of us that were around at that time called the word explosion. A lot of people all over the earth were being touched by God in phenomenal ways, and people just, I mean, they sat in meetings like this sometimes for a week at a time, three times a day, and we just, we just loved it. And we were taught a lot about this kind of thing that I'm teaching you about this weekend, only the terminology it came under then was spiritual warfare, learning how to come against the enemy. But a problem developed in that era because we all began to think that resisting the devil meant to resist our problems. Well, you're not going to do that to me. I'm a child of God. I'm not supposed to have any problems. I'm a person of faith. And I remember when God spoke to me, whispered to my heart, to resist the devil doesn't mean that you'll never have a problem. It means that when you have a problem, you resist acting like the devil. Come on, that's good. That is spiritual maturity. Jesus promised us tribulation. <laughs> In the world, you will have tribulation. There's seasons of great times and seasons of difficulty. And in those seasons of difficulty, we are stretched, our faith is stretched, and we grow to a new level. We gain a new capacity, and God is preparing us to do a greater thing in us and through us. 
You can have a problem and still be happy. Ephesians 6, verse 11. We found out in 2 Corinthians 10 that we have weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And now in Ephesians 6, we're taught that we have armor. So we have armor to protect us and weapons to go after the enemy with. And they're all spiritual weapons and spiritual armor. All this stuff that I'm talking to you about is something in the Spirit. We have to learn how to fight in the Spirit. Ephesians 6, 11, put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies, that you might be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Wow, what a verse that is. First two words are very important, put on. Put on. That means take some action. Activate this stuff. Use it to your benefit. God supplies the armor. All we have to do is put it on. Verse 12, for we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Do you know how many Christians there are that have never one time heard a good sermon on the devil? And some of you might be with us tonight. And you're thinking, what in the world is she talking about? I didn't come here to hear about devils and demons. Well, you need to hear about them because they know you. You ought to know them. Hey, I'm not being weird. Jesus talked about the devil all the time. He rebuked the devil. He cast out demons. He walked in power. He healed the sick. He walked in the supernatural. And he knew what the source of his problems were. Don't blame your problems on God. God is not the source of our problems. The enemy is. And I'm not trying to be weird. You see the enemy's influence everywhere in the world. All of this junk that's going on even in our country today. Surely you understand that is the influence of the wicked one. None of this that's happening is God's will. It's what the enemy wants to take place. And all this stuff about trying to get God out of everything, that's the devil. Of course he doesn't want God in anything. All we have to do is look at when America was boldly a Christian nation and how blessed we were. How unbelievably, amazingly blessed we were and we were able to bless the whole world. The greatest nation on the face of the earth in an amazingly small amount of time. Do you know that after the Holy Spirit was poured out in the 1900s, it was after that that almost all of the world's major inventions came to pass. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit fills people with creative power and good ideas. Well, the more our morals decline in this nation, the more our blessings disappear, the more problems we have, the more radical we see sin, it's the work of the devil. Totally the work of the enemy. And we need to say, you're not going to get me. When Jesus comes to get me, I'm going to be standing firm and strong. Anybody got their mind made up? Now, then he goes through here in Ephesians 6 and talks about various pieces of armor. I'm not going to do all of these in detail. There's one I want to camp on for a little bit. But the first thing it talks about is to tighten your belt of truth. So when you are in trouble, when you've got a problem, when you're being attacked by the enemy, the first thing you need to do, I'm not suggesting you go around screaming at demons all the time. Just tighten the belt of truth. And what that means is hold on to the Word of God stronger than ever before. Yeah. However much you believe the Word of God yesterday, if you've got a problem today, believe it twice as strongly today. Hold fast your confession of faith in Him. Be very serious about obeying God. Can I just say something to you with all the love I know how to muster? If you have known willful sin in your life, 
get rid of it. Now we all sin and come short of the glory of God. I'm not, I'm not talking about getting in the flesh and doing something wrong and recognizing it and right away repenting and asking God to forgive you. God knew about all that stuff and that's why he sent Jesus. But I'm talking about, and we've got too much of this going on today and way too much of it in the church. Too much compromise, too much acting like the world, too much making excuses. I mean, if you do a series on holiness, people want to stone you. <laughs> so I'm just saying lovingly and strongly, if you have willful, known sin in your life, you know that what you're doing is wrong. Now, if it's some kind of a thing where you're trying, you're really working with God to get free and you just don't have the victory yet, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about if you're just like, well, I'm just going to keep doing this and God understands. No, we don't. Well, you know, this is the 21st century. God don't care. He never changes. And the same moral standard he had for us in the beginning is the same moral standard he has today. Truth is not relative to the age we live in. Truth is truth, and it doesn't change. We cannot make up our own brand of truth. And I'll go on to something else, lest I make a bunch of people mad, but you got, you, you're only hurting yourself. God has got such an amazing, wonderful life for you. And whatever this thing is that you think you cannot give up and you must have, it is stealing your life. Yeah, yeah. And to walk away from it may be some temporary pain, but oh, the joy that's on the other side of that. Yeah. We are also called to take up our cross and follow God. Take up your cross and follow him. So hang on to that belt of truth. Tighten the belt of truth and do all that you possibly can to obey God. And when you run into difficulties, you're having troubles with things, God will help you. If you want to obey God, he will give you the grace and the power to obey him. You may have to work through some things. You might got to do some digging. You may have to get somebody to pray with you. But let me tell you something. If you're determined, I am not going to continue living like this. I want to glorify God with my life. God will help you. Amen. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Whoa, I love that one. Righteousness covers your heart. It gives you confidence. It lets you know that even though in and of yourself you may sin, that you have been given the righteousness of God in Christ. He views you and sees you through Jesus, and that's the way you need to walk before the enemy. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I know who I am. God loves me. I'm his child, and I am none of your business. <laughs> then the Bible teaches us to put on the shoes of peace. Now. Let me just tell you that peace is a power position. No peace, no power. Jesus had authority over the storm because he had peace during the storm. He was peaceful in the boat when all the disciples were having a fit about the storm. The story is told in Mark chapter 4. And when he got up and rebuked the storm, immediately it stopped. He had peace, therefore he had power over the storm. Do you know that staying in peace is a full-time job? Do you know how many things there are that have the potential to upset us every day? Do you know how many opportunities you have in one week to be offended? Come on, think with me. How many opportunities do you have to lose your peace? I, I want to encourage you to take a challenge. Keep your peace and drive the devil crazy. Because if you don't lose your peace, he can't control you. If you don't lose control, he can't control you. Are you with me? Well, I can't help it that I get so upset. 
Well, either we can help it or the Bible's not true. Let's look at John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. <laughs> My own peace I now give and bequeath unto you. Not as the world gives do I give unto you. Do not let your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Now watch this in the Amplified. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. So he's throwing it right back at us. Look, I've equipped you. I've given you my peace. I've given you the word of truth. I've given you righteousness. Now you put it on. You put it on. And you wear these things boldly. They're gifts from God. Put on the armor that God supplies. That you might be able to stand up against all the strategies and deceits of the enemy. God equips us. He gives us everything that we need to live in victory. He fills us with His Spirit. He fills us with His power. He gives us the word of truth. He gives us right standing with Him. Jesus said, I've left my peace with you. Now you stop allowing yourselves to get upset every time you turn around. 1 Thessalonians 5.13 says, be at peace among yourselves. Hebrews 12.14 says, strive to live in peace with everybody. Colossians 3.15 says, let peace rule in your heart and be the umpire over your life, deciding what's in and what's out. <laughs> 2 Peter 3.14, when Jesus comes, be found by him without spot or blemish and in serene peace. And I love this one, Romans 16, 20. And the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Yeah. yeah. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. You know, the Bible says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, waiting for his enemies to be made a footstool for his feet. He is seated. He is at rest. There's several places where the Bible depicts Jesus as seated on the throne, seated at the right hand of God. Until Jesus died, anybody who went into the presence of God, the high priest, they couldn't sit down because it was all works, 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 works. The priest had bells tied on the bottom of his robe and a belt around his waist, and he had to move and work the whole time he was in there. If the bell stopped ringing, they knew something happened, that he died, and they drug him out. This is the truth. I'm not making it up. And so it was very significant when Jesus, our high priest, when it says that he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. The Old Testament system of works of the flesh and sacrifices was over. Now we come into a covenant of faith and grace where God provides everything, He supplies everything, and we just need to believe it and act on it. I don't have to try to make myself righteous by being perfect. I do the best I can and I believe that I'm right with God through the blood of Christ. He's given me peace. I have peace in my spirit, and so do you. You just got to dig a little bit deeper and tap into it. How does it work? Somebody upsets you, you feel it starting at your toes. Come on, you can feel it. Before upset gets to your mouth, you know it's coming. Come on, it's safe. Do I do that good? That's because I've had a lot of practice. We even grit our teeth. And... <laughs> right there is where you need to start doing some warfare. Help me, Jesus. Help me, help me, help me. <laughs> help me. I rebuke you, Satan. You are not going to steal my peace. You are not going to steal my power. You are not going to get me upset. <laughs> and you'd be amazed how you can calm down. You know how I know we can do this? Because you know what? The way we act at home 
compared to the way we would act if we were around somebody we wanted to impress? Gotcha, didn't I? <laughs> would you behave in front of your pastor the way you do with your husband and your kids? Or your wife and your kids? <laughs> what if I knocked on your front door and you were in the middle of one of your fits? <laughs> Choice. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. So, here's the bottom line. Look at me and admit it. You can control yourself if you want to. And so can I. Come on, excuse time is over. Yeah, I'm not trying to be hard on you. I'm trying to help you. And the only way I know how to do that. Now, Jesus is seated at the right hand, waiting for his enemies to be made a footstool for his feet. And guess what? Here is the best part. We are seated in heavenly places in him. So he is the head, we are his body, he has been given all power, everything is under his feet. As long as we stay under him as our head, we're the feet and the enemy's under our feet. And we have victory. Then you go on to the shield of faith. Man, just walk in faith. Every time the enemy comes against you, say, I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Lift up the shield of faith. The helmet of salvation is talked about in Ephesians 6. That means think like a child of God. Don't think like a sinner. Think like a child of God. Wield the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That means speak the Word, use the Word. Make use of it. It's valuable. It's powerful. It is written. And then cover over everything with prayer. Jesus stripped Satan of his power. Wow. Colossians 2.15. If this don't get you excited, maybe you're dead. I don't know. <laughs> Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. God disarmed the principalities and powers <laughs> that were ranged against us and made a bold display and a public example of them triumphing over them in him and in it, the cross of Jesus Christ. Wow. And he did it for us. Everybody say, I have power and authority. And it's time I start using it. Now that doesn't mean that you're not going to have to stand firm sometimes. But you got to stand firm. Devil, you are not having my kids. You are not getting my marriage. You are not getting my health. You're not getting my joy. You're not getting my peace. And you're not going to keep me from helping other people. <laughs> now, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest to destroy the works of the wicked one, 1 John 3. That's why he came, to destroy the works of the wicked one. One last thing, and then we're going to close for this evening. In Matthew 16, 18 and 19, you're going to love it. Are you ready for this? I don't know if it can get any more exciting, but here it comes. And I tell you, you are Peter, a large piece of rock, and on this rock, not the rock of Peter, but the rock of his faith, <laughs> I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I declare that tonight over this nation. God will build his church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God will build his church and she will rise
rise again and be honorable and glorious and holy and spotless, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. Amen. And he further said, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Now, whatever you bind will be bound, and whatever you loose will be loosed. I don't know how much more God could do for us. If we do nothing with it, it is a pitiful, pathetic tragedy. Amen. Amen. I pray for every one of you in the name of Jesus that you will be energized with this truth. And that you will not just remember it for one day, but you will take this to heart and meditate on it and study for yourself and begin to walk in the power and the authority that is yours as a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God has so graciously provided everything that we need to live in victory. But we just need to learn how to use all the spiritual weapons and the armor that he has made available to us as believers in Jesus Christ. We are here in Tanzania, and we're in the middle of Tanzania in a land where the Datoga people live. And my first visit here was over a year ago, and the conditions of what we saw here just absolutely broke Shelly and Mai's heart. There was no water. People would have to walk for hours and hours one way to get dirty water. There was no education. And so we started planning and, and asking, how can we make a difference in this? And so today, we're here, and we have just dedicated one of five wells that we've dug in this area. And these are not just wells. They're solar paneled with pumps, and they have reservoirs of 10,000 liters, and they will just change this whole community. And we've dedicated a primary school that will, will do grades one, two, three, four, five. So we've literally changed this entire community uh, here in Tanzania, and we just couldn't do it without you. So we're so grateful. The people are so appreciative. And we say thank you, and God bless you.